So welcome everyone. Um, thank you for joining us today. We are um, Riverwoods in Manchester, New Hampshire. This is a lunch and learn. So it's a brief overview of our community. Um, and we have Sylvia and Webb Anderson joining us today. So they can talk a little bit afterwards about how they made the decision and what they're doing today here in our community. So it's just a brief overview. And if you want to learn more afterwards, you can more than welcome to make it to have a tour. So first, a little bit of uh, housekeeping before we get started. Any questions, we have a chat box there. So you can type in anything you want to ask at any point in time. Uh, we'll try to do those more towards the end. Everyone is on mute, um, but please, questions are how you learn more and more. So ask anything, nothing's too big or too small. And either I can answer it, or if it's more related to residents, then Sylvia and Webb can answer for you. So this is a map of um, Manchester, Manchester, New Hampshire, where you see the large orange arrow. That is where our campus is, Riverwoods, Manchester. So you can see we are minutes away, but yet a world away from downtown. We've got a great community. We've got conservation land all around us. So you have access about 15 minutes to get to the city, but you have your world away up here with lots of greenery and trees and lots of gardening opportunities that Sylvia can tell you about a little bit later. You can go up and down 93 to head north up to mountains and lakes. You can go down 93, head to Boston, or you can head over on 101 and get to the seacoast. We're in a great central location. This is a map of our campus. So this is the Riverwoods Manchester campus now. So we are on a, off of Countryside Boulevard. Our road is called Alliance Way. And you can see the building there is labeled with the white. So we have five different wings. We have several parking areas around the community. But this just starts to show you that you can see a lot of trees here. So there's a lot of greenery around us. So, um, which is just great. We're just a great little location. This is the main entrance to our community. Over on the left, we see the bright light. So that's the main entrance where you would come on in. Over to the right, you can see like a green um, cover over there. That's our outdoor patio. So there's outdoor dining there in the nice weather, which it is now. And there's also a fire pit that's out there now that you can uh, enjoy in the evening if you would like. But this is what you would see when you first come on up to Riverwoods, Manchester. We are part of the Riverwoods family. So the Riverwoods group. The first campuses were over in Exeter, New Hampshire. First one was in 1994 called The Woods. That is the original campus for the Riverwoods group. The next campus came along in 2004, and that is called The Ridge. And most recently for them is The Boulders in 2010. Our campus, Riverwoods Manchester, joined the family in 2016. Uh, previous to that, we were known as Birch Hill. Some of you may have heard that name in the past. So uh, we became affiliated back in 2016, but we just changed the name probably a month to a month and a half now at this point. So it's very clear to everybody that we're part of the family. The last campus, campus that came on is in Durham, New Hampshire, over by the seacoast. They opened in 2019. And the CP, SPE that you see there is, stands for someplace else. They're always watching and keeping an eye on where else can we bring our, our community. In, uh, over in uh, New Hampshire. So Riverwoods Manchester, I love this picture. It's a group of folks that just went out on a Saturday or a Sunday. But our community, we have been here for over 100 years, long history in the city of Manchester. We are what they call a not-for-profit, and which means that we have a charitable piece to our organization. We are what they call a continuing care retirement community, or some people might refer to it as a life care community. And we are the only CCRC in Manchester. So we are the only one available here. And we are actually just one of the few that are available in the entire state of New Hampshire. On our campus, we have 134 independent living apartments and four cottages. We, and then in, within our community, all in the same building, we have healthcare here. So when you need that long-term care, it's here within our community. And it can be in the form of assisted living, memory care, or nursing care. As I said in the past, we joined Riverwoods Group in 2016. So we are a three community system and there is definitely strength in numbers and nothing uh, showed that more than the past year with the pandemic, how we were able to help each other out with PPE and staffing. It's just, it's, it's more security to be uh, involved in a bigger group. 
uh, here in Riverwoods in Manchester, we are a type B CCRC, and which means you're only going to pay for the care that you need. So a resident here does not start paying for long-term care until they permanently need it. So that is one of the things we love about our contract is that you do not pay for it until you need it. Uh, when you do need the health care, it is well below mar market rate, and we'll share those rates with you in a little bit. And, and one important thing to point out is that we are an insurance contract which means that you're not purchasing. There's no real estate taxes. We are an insurance contract and we're overseen actually by New Hampshire Department of Insurance. So they are the ones that oversee our contracts and approve everything. It is a tax deduction. So it's a prepaid medical expense. So there's two types of deductions. One is the year you move in. There is a deductible for the non-refundable portion of your entrance fee. And then there's also a small percentage of your monthly uh, fees that are also a considered a prepaid medical expense and are tax deductible as well. It's a great gift you can give your children, that peace of mind, right? You all, everyone knows that they got the care here when they need it and they're not worrying about mom and dad and what's gonna happen next. And at, at the same time, it's a smart financial decision. 70% of your entrance fee is refundable back to your estate. We are the only CCR, CCRC in New England with a flexible 70% refundable entrance fee. So what does that mean? Basically it means your, it's your decision. You can do one of two things. You can have the 70% refund to your, to your estate. You can keep that intact and leave that as your asset preservation if you would like, or if you wanna utilize it, you can. So you can spend it on the increases in your monthly fees when you make the move to health care. And, and if and when that time comes. So it's your choice. You can hold on to it and keep it, all that assets preserved, or you can take the difference between your independent fees and your new healthcare fees and use that refundable portion to, to spend down. So you get the choice. So a brief overview of us, we are, you move in when you're independent before your health needs change, which means before you quote need it, okay? It's a term I hear a lot from folks, right? I don't need it yet. Well, you should do it before you need it. Come enjoy the wonderful lifestyle and get involved. And that's going to keep you healthier and happier for a longer period of time. You do have to be at least 62, though. Um, so you have to be 62 years old. And you get that care coordination throughout your lifetime, which means that when the time comes or if the time comes that you need health care, there are people here to help you walk through those steps. We have a wellness clinic with a nurse practitioner. And we have a social worker on site. So they help to keep to, to coordinate all that care. You also, with your uh, in, in when in independent living, you get 30 days free of respite each year, which means that say you have a hip replaced or a knee replaced, maybe you get the flu and you're really under the weather, you need a little bit more help. You can do respite here in our community, in the health center. There are three suites over there that are just for health care. I mean, just for respite. And you can... Stay there until you get a little strong enough to go back to your independent apartment. No extra fee at all for charge for that. So it's great to know that that's there if you need it. And we talked about the, um, briefly talked about the, the, the cost of health center. So it's either 1,000, 1,500 or 2,000 off of your care monthly for your lifetime. So there, so that's a great rate. Riverwoods Manchester, though, is about more than that. It's about the neighborhood full of passionate people who want to have fun doing what they're doing every day. We've got ladies driving a red Miata here. There's lots of fitness classes. If you want to, you can really dig in the dirt and get your, your hands dirty, as Sylvia can tell you about later. Um, <laughs> or you can be playing bridge with and getting uh, some bridge partners together. The choice is yours, but you do what you're passionate and what you want to be doing on a daily basis. Here's some great uh, shots of some people getting some exercise. So we have a, in our fitness room, you can be using a punching bag if you'd like. You could be taking a yoga class or a meditation class. Um, folks get together and go hiking. So this is out when it was in colder weather, but they were out, um, out hiking out in the National Conservation Land. It's right across the street, but it's great to stay active and keep moving and, and, and keep getting some exercise. These folks here around our community, so whether you're dining, you can be doing artwork, or the far picture on the right, you can see Nancy McGeehan. She's still active in Manchester. So she is what they call a docent at the Curry Museum of Art. So she volunteers her time to give tours over there. So it's all about, again, staying active and engaged and social. 
Here's some folks, whether they're outside on our campus or they're over at Lake Massabesic, out enjoying the beautiful weather, probably on a day like today. We have raised garden beds. So if you're interested in that, every residence can get their own. You can do flowers. Uh, believe you can do vegetables if you'd like as well. Um, and so that's nice if somebody wants to continue that. Then there are some people we have here who are master gardeners who um, help with the groundskeeping and the landscaping around the whole community. Last fall, we had a 5K, our very first um, run slash walk. Had a great time. Residents could run, could walk. They could simply be out there cheering people on. There was a chili cook-off and it was a great time. Matter of fact, it was such a great time that they're redoing it again, but they're doing it in the spring this year. So we're going to be having another fall, another spring 5K coming up here just in a couple of weeks, I believe, where residents are involved, uh, staff's involved, and it's just great to get together and, and get out there and either cheer people on or get out there and move yourself if you want to. I mentioned hiking. So across the street from us is 600 plus acres of conservation land. So it's called the Cedar Swamp Preserve. Um, there are trails that are designated out there. Some of our residents go off trail and go out hiking, just some great outdoors. And we have one resident who has an email chain that he sends pictures every day of what he's gone to see. We have cameras out there that take pictures of wildlife, um, anything from herons and beavers to uh, deer and to bear, believe it or not. So there's everything out there. Right now, I believe the trails are closed as of today, but it's for a great reason. It's because they are creating an ADA compliant trail in that in the Cedar Swamp Preserve. And the construction is started on that right now. They, as I go by, you can see trees have been taken down and they've started the process. So once that's completed, it will all open back up again. Here's some great pics from the preserve actually out there. There's the herons. There was, I think last summer, there was like a dozen heron nests out there that they were watching every day but there's great fauna and wildlife and just great. You're in Manchester, but you're out in the great outdoors. You'd never know it. Here's some more pictures of some of the um, out there in the, in the great wildlife. And I think if you can tell, bottom picture, second to the left is a deer in there. So that was when they got a shot of one of the deer. And here's some more with the beavers and the heron. Again, all out of that Cedar Swamp Preserve. Some folks out hiking so you can see this is a trail top picture or you can go off trail whatever you would like here's our main entrance with some beautiful hydrangeas i think sylvia those are hydrangeas right yes i got it right okay <laughs> um at the, at the entrance so there's more and more uh flowers out there all the time i think sylvia's had a little bit of a hand in some of that but it's a great that's the main entrance where you would come get, come in come on in and see us as far as apartments go, we have, um, I think, eight different styles. And what we have been doing over the past three, four years is renovating everything. So we've opened up kitchens so there's nice and light and bright. We have a breakfast area that you can utilize, that you can sit at to have breakfast in the morning. But we really, really have done a nice job of making everything really um, just nice and light and bright and, and someplace you want to be and you can enjoy. This is one of our residence apartments. So residents do have the option if they'd like to do some upgrades. So what you can see here is what looks like um, the wood flooring, that's premium luxury vinyl tile. So the resident had decided to put that in. Um, so you can do things like that if you like. So this is just another style apartment. And like I said, this is somebody, somebody's actual home. So this is where they're living. So you can see how they styled it and brought in their own home furnishings and made it home. This is of the Poplar, which is our largest unit, which is going to be coming available um, in the very near future. So if anyone's interested in a unit that's over 1,400 square feet, um, it's important to get a hold of your um, sales counselor sooner than later. Um, but again, nice big open space. What we did here was actually combine two units, open them up, take the wall down. So it's lots and lots of space. Here's a couple more pictures of that as well, so you can kind of see how it's just nice and big. It's got a great 23 foot deck looking at the trees. Wonderful space. And here's some more pictures of the poplar as well. Here's another resident home. So you can see how they've decorated here. So people bring in their own furnishings from home and, and make it home. Put things up on the walls, put things in the windows if you want. You make it home for yourself. The various floor plans. So this is the Aspen. This is our smallest. So it's one bedroom, one bath. 
I'd just like to point out the bathrooms and kitchens are uh, primarily the same footprint. So a kitchen is always a full kitchen. You can cook as little or as much as you want. Um, and bathrooms have showers only, uh, single sinks with um, drawers on either side, but there's plenty of space in our bathroom. So this one here is the Aspen. And then this, the next size up is the Birch. So it's set up a little bit differently, a little bit larger space. The cedar, I like how the cedar is laid out. You get like a small dining area with the living room. And with the cedar, you get that extra half bath. So sometimes that's important to folks. They, when they have company, they don't want them going into their bathroom. They want the, the separate one. So this works out well for that. But this is the cedar floor plan. And uh, what you can see when you're looking at these floor plans is in the walk-in closets is a square. And I'll move, you can see, I think you can see my pointer right up there. That's a stackable washer and dryer. So all the homes come with a stackable washer and dryer. You do your own laundry. And um, this particular unit, the fur, now some of them start to have a second bedroom or a den, depending on how you want to use it. So you can have that as a, as a study. Some people use it as a craft room, as a sewing room. Some folks use it as a second place to have a TV, just have a small sofa and a TV in there. You get to use your imagination and use the spaces as you want to. This is a Juniper. So this is one of our larger units. These are very large bedrooms, two full bathrooms, so lots of space. And again, people make it their own when they come in. They decorate it as they want to. And this is the poplar that I was talking about. This is our largest, uh, over 1,400 square feet, lots of great living space. Uh, you could have your whole family over for Thanksgiving dinner if you want this space. It's, it's very big. So Riverwoods Manchester has a lot of other open space. So besides your home, where else can you go and what else can you do? Well, we have a library that's resident run on site. We have a dining room that is open for lunch and for dinner, uh, where you can go down and dine with friends. You can bring family in starting next week again if you want to, to have them in for a meal as well. Um, but you, get, you can just enjoy and socialize and enjoy a really good meal. If you want some privacy, we have a private dining room that um, for a small fee, you can have that dining room to yourself with your, you and your family or friends, whoever you want to. Um, and you can have the kitchen make you a fabulous meal if you want. Or if you want to order a pizza from Domino's and bring that in, you can do that too. Up to you. Um, there's a mail room on site, so make, your mail gets delivered to a post office box every day. We have a tavern, which again is resident run, and that's a big, you'll hear that a lot here. It's resident run. So residents are taking, taking control of some of the things that they want to do. They are, they're not just sitting back and letting the staff do everything. They're involved. They're involved in the process. So a resident run tavern means that some of the residents bartend, they wait tables, and they clean up after themselves. And that's open right now on Tuesdays and Fridays, and it's a social happy hour is what it really is. This picture here you see is the living room. So got a great gas fireplace, a baby grand piano. There's newspapers out there every morning. You can come up and get coffee, fresh fruit, and some type of um, bread or pastry. And uh, some classes take place in the living room. And a lot of times residents will gather to socialize around four o'clock in this space as well. We have a multi-purpose room where a lot of the activities and entertainment is held there. Sometimes the fitness classes. If it's big enough, go to that room instead. We have an art gallery um, and our fitness room is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We have a fantastic fitness instructor, all different kinds of classes, and she will work with you one-on-one. -on -one. If you want to get a program started for yourselves, she'll do that as well. There's also a wood shop. There's a country store for you to pick up small essential items. We have sun rooms and patios throughout the community that you can utilize as well. Um, some of the homes have patios and balconies, some do not. Sylvia and Webb, do you guys have a balcony? I don't recall. No, we don't. No. Not. Okay. But we have uh, sun. There, there's sun. There you go. <laughs> we have those. There's reading nooks where you can grab a book um, and hang out in and sitting areas. There's a card room. Um, I think I mentioned briefly, there's a bridge group that gets together right now. And there's also a poker group. Um, I expect to see some more. I have people asking about Mahjong a lot. So I can see that happening kind of next. We have a salon, a hair salon, which also does manicures and pedicures. Um, they're looking into getting a massage therapist. I don't think we've found that person yet, but that will be starting as well. And there's great expansive hot hallways, lots of good space, lots of lighting, nice and bright. 
This is a good shot of our living room. So you can see all the natural light that kind of flows in from the large windows. If you went up to that railing, the dining room is down there. So you're overlooking the dining room space. Here's another shot of it from a different angle. So you can see that as well. So they've done a really nice job with the renovations. This is a multi-purpose room, which just as it says, can be used for multiple purposes. It can be classes, it can be entertainment, it can be movies, it can be everybody getting together for the Super Bowl when the big game happens. Uh, I'm hoping this year the Red Sox will be in the World Series and we'll be watching it in this room all together on the big screen. So it gets, it's just a great space, nice and big, light and bright, can host a multitude of things. Here's some shots of the fitness room. So we have different pieces of equipment. There's a multifunctional trainer that you can see in the corner. So that one can be used lots of different ways. So instead of having like maybe four or five different machines, that one machine can do a lot of different things. Um, they have treadmills, they have bikes, they have rowers, um, and you utilize whatever you want to. But it's a great space, like not so all natural light coming in from two sides. Here's our library. So this is, you can see, it's been redone not too long ago. Beautiful. Custom bookshelves got put in there. I know that. So that's absolutely great. And you go in, you get the book you want, you just sign it out. And when you're done, you drop it back in the slot. Always taking donations. Um, hard to see here, but if you're looking straight on the top picture on the right, over to the left, that's the new book area. So there's always new things coming in all the time. Lots of good reads. And there's also a book club group that gets together as well. Here's a nice little look in one of our hallways and one of our floors. They're all over the community where you can just um, read a book if you want, sit down and drink a cup of coffee. Here's some of our sunrooms. So you can see they're floor to ceiling windows. Some of them have puzzles in them. Some of them just have the table, some have seating. This particular sunroom here has musical instruments in it. So, and I know people come in and use those and been singing, have a, a little chorus in there sometimes. Here's a good shot of the wood shop. Um, and then the mail room is in the bottom right there. This is a shot from dining. So this is some of our residents enjoying a good meal. So just as you see here, there's table and full service dining. So they give you a menu. You select off the menu what you want. And our dining program has a flexible dining point system. So if you come on in, your um, sales counselor could explain more, more of that to you. But it's a great way we try to give you options. Instead of saying you get one meal a day or two meals a day, we try to give you some flexibility with that. Here's another more shot of dining right there, you can see. And I like to point out that everybody you see here in these pictures are actual residents. We don't ever use models, it's the real deal. <laughs> and so your monthly fees, uh, what's included with those? Quite a bit. So you have bi-weekly housekeeping where they'll vacuum, dust, mop the floor, wash your bathroom. They won't do dishes. One thing I'd say, they don't do your dishes for you. You have to do those on your own. There's the Dining Points program, which I told you about, which we can get into in detail if you come in the tour. There's a great uh, free light continental breakfast that's up in that living room. And that is um, part of your monthly fee. No points are attached to that at all. There's many different activities. And boy, I got a quick sneak peek of what's going to be going on this summer. There's some great things going to be happening. I'm very super excited when I saw some different activities that I've never seen us do before. Um, things like, are you ready, Sylvia and Webb? I saw it zip lining is on the list. So there you go. There's going to be all kinds of stuff. <laughs> uh, this is a great, great. They're really going to get everybody active and engaged and out there. There's the 30 days of respite that's included in your monthly fee every year. So if you need that extra help, you need a little bit of nursing help to get back on your feet, it's there for you. Pre-scheduled local transportation. So that's the Manchester Bow, or I mean, Manchester Bedford, excuse me, or hooks it. And there is always staff here. So 24 hours a day, seven days a week, there is emergency response. If you need, the, uh, need help, you pull the pull cord in the bathroom or the bedroom, or you press your pendant and they will be there. And that kicks in the whole system in terms of if the social worker needs to get involved, like how can we best help you? Also included is your utilities, most utilities. So it doesn't include uh, a landline, if you still do a phone landline, and it doesn't include your cable but everything else is, including the Wi-Fi. There's, everybody gets a storage cage and winter car service. So what they do for the residents in the winter is above and beyond the plowing, they will clean off your car. So clean it all off for you, clean up your space so you do not have to do it. 
part of your monthly fee. Other benefits, there is also what they call living for hire. So that is staffed within from our LNAs. It's non-medical. So it's helping somebody out if they need a little assistance in their home um, to keep them there safely. We have visiting nurses association on site so they can be doing physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, medication management. It has to be, it has to be ordered by your physician, um, but they are here every day of the week. So that's a great benefit as well. We do weekly lab draws from both hospitals, which is Catholic Medical Center or the Elliott. We do blood pressure checks on site and there is free Rite Aid deliveries every day. The complimentary pull cords or pendants, like I said, are in your bed that are able for you to use if you're in case of emergency. You press your pull and we'll be there. And one thing I haven't mentioned is the benevolent fund. So should you move to Riverwoods Ex Exeter, right? Should you move to Riverwoods Manchester and you outlive all your assets through no fault of your own, we have benevolence here. So you apply for benevolence. There is an application. Um, it is very dis discreet. So you talk with the executive director and the director of finance, and they will help. That fund will help bridge the gap between what you can afford and what it costs to live here. So they won't ask you to leave if you run out of money, which I think is just a huge benefit and part of being a not-for-profit. So how do you qualify? There's two pieces. One is financially. It's called a con confidential data profile. You fill in income, assets, and liability, and you give that information to your sales counselor. We provide that accounting department, and using actuarial software, they run the numbers to see if you can live here comfortably financially. And then medically, there's a health disclosure that you fill out and an in-person medical assessment. That can be done via Zoom if somebody's maybe in a different part of the country. We do prefer to do it in-person too. And that's to make sure that somebody will be um, safe and healthy and independent living as well. Once you go through those two steps, you're approved medically and financially. What do you do then? So once you select an apartment or a home for yourself, you put the 10% deposit down on that. And that's kind of the clock starts. So you have 60 days to close. Closing means you're going to sign the contract. You read through it first, sign it. Um, do all that paperwork, and you can move in anytime from that point on. Monthly fees start when you do the closing, and you move in at your convenience. So some people like to do it really quickly um, in a day or two. Some people take some time. It kind of depends on what's best for you. Uh, the one thing I can tell you right now with the housing market, the way it's been, is it's very easy for people to sell their home within those 60 days. That is that, if anything, we're, we're pushing to get everything done on our end. So it's, it's been a an interesting turn of events. And once you're here, you enjoy a fabulous lifestyle. You leave the work to us, leave the choice to us, and you live your best life and you do what you want to do. So to, what I believe in is the CCRC offers the best value of in senior living. So it's all about making a plan, making a plan for your future and choosing your change. So welcome home to Riverwoods. It's the only CCRC in New England with that flexible entrance fee. So that's a lot of information all at once. This is a shot of the um, downtown Manchester. So there is a video on a website you can jump on to see if you'd like to do that. I can't get that one to operate right now, unfortunately. So again, if you have any questions, you can put them in the Q&A box. But while we're letting you do that, I'm going to let I'm going to sit back and let Sylvia and Webb talk for a little bit. I've done enough. My voice is tired. <laughs> So why don't you guys tell me how you made the decision to, to be here? Why don't we start there? Oh, I haven't made the decision yet. I, 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 what you just told me, I think I'll put in an application. <laughs> okay, sounds good. We'll chat afterwards. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, we moved, actually, we decided to move after talking with our three children about could we stay in our home or, you know, what was our next step? And because all of our children, they're not far away, but they're all established in their homes and they were not able to take on the old family home that we've been in for, well, Webb's family since 42. So we quickly shifted from staying in our home in Chester to now, where do we go? And it just happened that we saw an ad for then Birch Hill in the paper that they were offering uh, a luncheon and, time to hear about what was available. We came, I signed my name and Leanne called us. 
I did. <laughs> and it started from there. So we came over, we had lunch. One day they arranged for us to come over and have lunch with one of the uh, a couple residents. Um, and I don't know, within, within in a matter of months, we had signed on the dotted line and moved in right after we passed papers. All right. The, uh, just so you know, we, we were residents of New Hampshire. We lived about 15 miles from here uh, in this old house, <clears throat> retired there, there about 15 years. And uh, so when it came time to think about the next step, we, we were local, we weren't trying to figure this out from Oregon or some distant place. So we went, we shopped around New Hampshire a bit and uh, we knew a lot about the Riverwood's reputation. And so uh, that's one reason we came over to that luncheon and then we just, it just made good sense to us from that point on. So uh, <clears throat> that's how we got here. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping it moving right along with, there you go. So, so what, did your, what did your family think about this, you guys being here? They were very much in favor of it, though none of them were able. Yes, our daughter was able to see it the day we moved in. We moved in March 9th and everything here was closed down. So in some senses, we are just beginning to hear all of the things that will be happening. We, had, we went to a coffee with Tasha this morning and heard from Tasha and Jacob two people who were involved in, you know, thinking about events, like going, how many wanted to go on a zip line? And right. so that's in the works. Or how many, oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're going, Sylvia, all right. I, I am going, I am going. Um, so so it's it's opening up in the movies that they have, the the game night, and a lot of people who come to these coffees that are, held once a week uh, in the morning on Wednesdays, um, there were quite a few new people who don't know, like us, what was available before the pandemic. So, uh, so it's opening up. But when I came, I didn't have many problems getting, you know, finding things to do because I am a gardener. And again, Leanne put me in touch with Elaine. And my mm -hmm. first Introduction to Elaine was she was walking in the front door with a bucket of worms. So mm -hmm. that kind of gave that she was going to add to her garden, her raised bed, which she had. So Elaine is another resident. And so we have, the two of us have really gotten out there. There are many gardens around. And um, because we are gardeners, we're not just people who mow and like they have someone do all the mowing and plowing in the winter time but we like the gardens. So we've been working on many, many places. In addition to having a raised bed where we can do our own uh, vegetables or flowers or whatever. So, and that way I was out all winter long walking in the neighborhood and it was very little traffic up on the hillside and all kinds of different places to walk around here. If you don't mind going on hills. And I thought that was that was a good part of the exercise is getting out and walking. And and so I met a lot of people first who were out walking as I was. Um, right. Yeah, so, you're doing a great job with the garden. They're looking beautiful. Every time I come in, I notice more. I'm like, ooh. That's fine. <laughs> and another thing that was nice was when the fitness room opened up. And so, you know, I happened to like the row machine, which I had never done and the bike and Webb has done that fancy machine with all the pulleys and, and. I've been going to fitness clubs for years. And so it was natural for me to pick up on that. And uh, uh, so I go down there at seven o'clock in the morning and get that out of the way. If I don't do it then, <laughs> it goes by and I never get back to it. So that's where that routine's worked out for me. But there's all kinds of things. There's more things to do here than you can keep track of. So you find your niche, you find the friends that you suddenly, be, the people have become your friends and you share interests and so forth. And it, it's not, it's very easy to, to integrate in here. Sylvia knows everybody in the place and which apartment they live in. I probably know a half a dozen people. But that's my capacity. That's all I need. You're <laughs> doing you, great. <laughs> yeah, once, once you meet Le, Le, Leanne, everything else is downhill. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> 
Well, thank you for that. But <laughs> one of the one of the things I did right at the start was I got. In fact, Elaine's husband Carl showed me the trail just at the end of a light cross country sideway, and and Carl showed me how to get down to the pond. Conservation. It's the conservation land, but but it's really you know we can go down there, and so it was the herons and there were 16 nests and there were 44 chicks that were hatched last I didn't summer. know there were that many wow there are only 15 not 16 nests I think that are productive this summer but oh, you know maybe. they're slacking <laughs> so and and Bill Foss who goes down every day has two cameras that he ties onto the you know a tree or something and he knows strategically whether it's the the herons or the wood duck nest uh, birdhouse or the uh, beaver lodge and the dam and what's going on. So every day he will come back with a report. And all you do is say, Bill, can I get me on your your email list? So daily, I we all those who want can watch what's going on. And just this past week, there have been three sightings of a black bear down there. There have been. Okay. And so, uh, and and the deer, we've had otters, you know, it's just, it's all kinds of things about turtles and the habits of different animals. And, and we've had fox that we've seen on campus. So it really, one of the things I love about it is nature. You feel like you're part of nature and, and you can look out and whether it's the birch grove or all you know other kinds of trees. It's funny that you mentioned turtles when I was leaving last night. So it was about 5.30 um, yeah. and there was cars stopped on both sides of the road on Cornerstone. And I'm like, what is going on? And so I go real slow. There was a good sized turtle, probably, you know, yay big. That needed to cross the road and everybody was stopping to watch and wait for the turtle. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I saw one out back in the parking lot, uh, out behind the multi-purpose room one day. And I thought, well, how did it get here? Where was it going? But yeah. it, it was going towards this uh the trail, the Vernal Pool Trail is another place that's right as part of you walk around the campus, you can go take the trail. And and so the, you know, whether the, you hear the peepers in the spring or, you know, there really is a lot of nature and a lot of, a lot of things we're getting educated, you know, about too, through this blog that Bill does. Good, that's wonderful. Yeah. What, what else are you guys involved in? I know Webb that you're involved in bridge, right? Yeah, I, I've uh, picked up on playing bridge. That was uh, something I used to do in college and once in a while in later life, but got over here and there's some avid bridge players. So every uh, Tuesday afternoon at 1.30, we gather and whoever, it's a drop-in thing and we move partners around so you don't always play with the same person. We have all levels of, of uh, you know, abilities and so on. And then on Thursday night, once a month, we have an outside, uh, quite an expert bridge player that comes in and actually teaches classes and so forth. So if that's your particular interest, there's a wonderful opportunity to do that here. Are you doing uh, the class too? I'm sorry? Are you taking the class too on that Thursday? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, he's a person that teaches a personal friend of mine. He'd be upset if I didn't do that, <laughs> <laughs> as it turns out. But but uh, but there's more things to do around here than, than you can keep up with it. And now that it's begun to open up and there's a a weekly schedule that's put out with all these different activities and you sit down and you sort of circle a few one here and one there and then when the reality sets in you can't do them all you know it's just, it's just a lot of them on campus on around the building and a lot of them are off campus they people they go off to the all the way to the hampton beach or or out to restaurants and and uh musical programs and so on all of this was denied during the uh COVID uh, pandemic thing. And so it's uh, really a new experience for us to really see what this place is like in its full, full glory. <clears throat> so I'm curious, what, I know, well, go ahead, Sylvia. Well, I was gonna say one thing that we haven't said anything about of the staff and during during the pandemic, when we were closed down, the staff, start. they were all pleasant, they were fun. You could tell they were smiling, saying good morning, or you know, whenever you pass them in the corridors. And the staff works beautifully together. They did a wonderful job, you know, with they followed CDC guidelines, but knowing how to keep us safe 
and let still let us, you know, go outdoors to walk or something. But the staff, we've just really appreciated all that they've done for us and how they've kept things moving and always letting us know what the next step would be. You know, if the windows didn't get washed last year, they're going to get washed this year. And as we found out when we came in and, oh, the screens were taken out because you can't yeah. wash windows with screens on. Yeah. Um, and, and so we've been kept up to date with a lot of the things that, you know, that are going on within the building and what has to be done to the building. Mm -hmm. um, it takes a lot to keep, the, to keep it going, right? It's a it does. It does. Mm -hmm. Can yeah, you share some of the things that... The staff deserves high marks for all the extra work they did during the pandemic. I mean, they were they were really stressed quite a lot, and they never buckled. They were just right here for square and and kept kept up with things. And that's a really comforting thing as you get older. You realize that you've got people supporting you like that in a place like this. It was really really quite remarkable. Wonderful to hear. We do have a couple of questions. Um, let's see. Does the Manchester campus? offer a variety of independent standing homes. So we have 134 independent apartments and four um, condomin condominium complexes. So there is plans very much in the future to build more of those. Um, but right now we're focusing in on the building. So the four um, homes that right now are um, living in, someone's living in them. So, so there's none available right now. There will be more built in the future. It will just Timing we do not know right now. What is the age demographic in Manchester, youngest and oldest? So average age is right around 80 years old. Um, our youngest resident is 64 or 65. I don't quite recall. Mm -hmm. And I honestly do not know what the oldest is. I know we do have residents that are over 100 that live here. So there's quite the range. What we are finding now is that people are people start to think about it sooner. And in all honesty, the two and a half years that I've been here, um, I think it's easier for folks when they do it sooner, if that makes any sense. So I think when people do it more when they're in their seventies and on the younger side, it's, they don't, they just think about everything they're gonna enjoy when they get in here and they get involved with activities and goings on and they still have their life doing whatever they were doing outside of here, but it's an easier transition I think when people start to have some type of a medical event, or maybe they start to have a little bit harder time getting around, it's a harder, it's a harder, um, harder choice for them to do. I think that's what I've noticed. That's just me personally noticing that. But I think it's good to do it when you're young and take advantage of everything that this that Riverwoods has to offer. Um, and you can you can go zip lining if you're physically still able to do that, right? So I think it's important to do it sooner than later. Yeah. Um, well, the I, other the other thing is is, and I've talked with quite a few people who have made the decision to move. That you know the process of selling a home that you've been in or has been in your family for generations, it is a huge undertaking to dispose of a lot of things and to <laughs> that to do the downsizing, and you know I think now what I want to at this point have started the process of selling my home. And as hard it is as it is to leave your home, just the freedom to have done that. And so the burden will not be left to your children to clean out your home later on. And we really did this and we say we did it because of our children that we didn't think it would be fair to leave it all for them to do or to help us make a move when we really couldn't get involved. So that, that was another big piece of it. Right, peace of mind for all of you, you and your children, right? Yeah. All the way around. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, somebody was, so is pricing predicated on model of the chosen unit? Yes, it is. So pricing starts with the smallest is the Aspen um, and go up according to size. And if you want, if you have not received a packet of information yet about our community, you can request that and we'd be happy to mail that along to you as a good next step. And, um, and I will just let you know that if you get one right now, so our new fiscal year will start again July 1st. So that's when we will probably be seeing an increase in fees at that point in time. Um, at, at that point in time. But yeah, if there's any more questions, we'd be happy to answer them for you. Sorry about that. Oh, goodness. Um, while I'm waiting to see if there's any more questions, the next webinar 
um, that we are going to have is called The Keys to Living a Happy and Healthy Life with Dr. Robert Weldinger. This is fantastic. He's written a book. He's wonderful to listen to. Um, and that is going to be next Thursday, June 10th at 10 a.m. So there is still time if somebody wants to join us with that, they are able to do so. You just go onto our website and register right there. And Sylvia Webb, when you were in the talk, coffee talks with Tasha, what other what other things they mentioned might be going on this summer? Was there more that probably I don't um, know more? <laughs> Well, I know uh, some of the discussion was around games, how many games that are available in the uh, living room and you know the cupboard, and so how to introduce more of these games that are available. There were only a couple of people who wanted to play cribbage, but then. I don't know, there must have been 24 of us this morning with Tasha. And, and so there were several you know, people saying, oh, well, I know they play cribbage or play poker. And, and where, where are all of these activities taking place? So there are a lot of games that are coming up. They talked about, uh, do people wanna to get together and go out to breakfast? What restaurants do they wanna to go to? Uh, maybe get a tr in the bus and go over to Portsmouth and, and have some time just to wander around Portsmouth on your own. Uh, possibility of a cruise out of Portsmouth. Um, so uh, I'm I'm to, <laughs> it, it just seemed to go on and on, but even, the, even things like coming up when they take the screens out, how soon after they clean the windows did the screens come back on? Well, they clean all the screens while they were out. So there are always some of these little, you know, nitty gritty details that I want my screens back because when we don't have the heat and humidity, we want to throw the windows open of the bugs coming in. And I say, well, I just tell them at night when I open the window with no screen, the bugs aren't invited. <laughs> and they listen to you very good. <laughs> just like I tell the chipmunks not to come and get in the raised beds. <laughs> oh, I never thought of that. Oh, goodness. Oh. <laughs> so the little coffee talk, is that one, once a month or once a week? How often do they do Natasha that? Tasha does that once a week. Nice. Uh, there's a kitchen uh, discussion. I think that's every other week. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Robbie with the maintenance and kinds of things. Um, I think he might do it once a month or, or every other week. But, you know, we hear about the projects that are going on and he notifies us. Um, and, and when something comes up, that's right, right there, there's a speaker in all of our rooms. And so everyone gets a phone call or the buzzer goes off and they make announcements if they really have to. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. so we are really kept well informed and the people at the desk downstairs couldn't be nicer. And we've had a lot of different people, but you know, you simple things and, and you go down and chat. You know, so so it's very friendly. Some people like to sit down for a little bit, which we could not do all the time during COVID, but we now can, you know, it's it's really an experience, a transition from having a mask on all the time right. to now without, we don't have to wear a mask going out of our apartment, which we did until just a couple of weeks ago. So we're unlearning some of the things but knowing that 100% of the independent living people have had, uh, we're vaccinated as of March 16th. There were a couple of people had to wait a little while, but basically we are feeling very safe here. Now, do I wear a mask if I go do a little food shopping? Absolutely. I'm still not, you know, I'm not ready because not everyone has been vaccinated. But just knowing there is a place where you can be, knowing everyone's been vaccinated is very it's a great feeling. And it's great to see everybody smile. Yeah, you know? it is. It is. It's, it's wonderful. Yeah. Except when someone takes off a beard, you don't and a mask, you don't know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> That's who what you look like. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. Any any closing thoughts for either one of you? We don't have any more questions, so. Any closing thoughts? Well, it just was the right decision for us. We made it at the right time. We made it at the right time for our children. And, and just like any new experience, you just 
kind of say, I'm going to go, I am going to meet people, I am going to try and fit into the community that is part of this part of stage of our life. And I just think that, you know, you can come and, and have an, oh, I miss my house. So, and that happens, but I'd rather focus on the positive and the things all that's available to us and be grateful for all that we do have here and in our lives. It's a very, it's a very, very friendly place. People acknowledge each other uh, happily every time you, even people you don't know as you bump into them in the hall. It just, it just a, uh, just very comfortable and place to be and we're very happy here. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to dress up when you go down to dinner or something that that I'm comfortable in who I am and and what I choose to wear. And, you know, I'm not going to go around in holy dungarees, but you don't feel like you got to put on a coat and tie to go to dinner or something. So it's it's just, you know, it's a very comfortable place to be. It is. I agree. I agree. All right. Well, I think our time is just about up. Thank you, Webb and Sylvia, so much. Solid gold as usual. You guys are wonderful. Um, they really truly have been a joy. I remember going to a, we went to, I don't even remember what the name of the show was. Um, oh, Jersey the Jersey Boys. Boys. Jersey, Jersey Boys. That's what we went to. <laughs> just had a blast. And I was so excited when I knew they were deciding to, to come and live with us because I just thought they would be a great addition to the community. And they have been. So thank, thank you for sharing your time today. Thank if you. Any, anybody has any questions you you'll be hearing from the different sales counselors if you want to pack it if you want to come in and tour we are doing that now wide open so i do hope you'll come and see us and learn even more everybody have a wonderful rest of your day and thank you for joining thank you goodbye everybody bye-bye bye-bye